Here you can see on the inside, it's not as shiny. Our first guess comes from Mr. Michael Thomas, and it'll probably be correct. Mike, what kind is this? It is absolutely free wood. This was given to me in a big, nice log, and I watched it crack over the year. <laughs> so, Jerry, what do you got? Not elm. Not elm. Not pear. That's a good guess. David Stalling, what do you think? Not hickory. I can't believe you guys. Come on. Now, uh, something Anthony told me was these little lines of just beginning fungus clued him in on what it was. Ed, what is it? You have no idea? Nope. All right, guys. I can't believe this. I thought this was going to be the easiest one. This is just a little piece of cherry. Now, it's an unusual piece of cherry because it's got a lot of different colors going through it. But, uh, yeah, it, it's totally cherry. That's my taste. <laughs> Next. <laughs> this used to be in my front yard. Um, And one day it decided to fall over and it became something else. <laughs> I think it has a little COD on it as a, um, as a sanding sealer rather than as a trim. Right. Yeah. We really need to go to that wood site. The wood site. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> no. Is it native to this area? Usually it's considered more of a southern tree. A monster. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's also known as silk tree because it's not Okay. Any guesses? It's got epoxy for a finish. The band here is epoxy with my uh, granules, but anybody have any guesses? Did it come out of your yard? No. I thought maybe. No. No, it's pretty well spalted too, as you can see. Pardon? No. 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 It was uh, River Birch. I'll give you a little hint. None of this came from America. So. Africa. This. This is from Africa now. Central Africa. Striped maple. I mean, striped ebony. What? No, I can't turn cocoa bowl. I'm allergic to it. No. 
Okay, where does it where does it originate? Uh, this one, the top is from India. <laughs> He's got it, and the bottom is from uh, Central West Africa. No. It kind of looks like quilted maple, but it's not. Yeah. No. No. Sapelli. Okay. This one here. Yeah, it's a burl, yeah. Uh -huh. Comes out of Southeast Asia, so. And it's part of the Burma Paduk tree. No. Hey, give up? <laughs> it's Amboina burl. Amboina burl. Yes, so evidently it's the most sought after burl there is. So, and I got it by accident. So, so I'm not going to pay for that. Stuff, so, <laughs> I just like the exotic woods. <laughs> we have three. We have three pieces of three species of wood in this. I'll give you that. No. No. Nope. Nope. Honey locust. Okay, number two. What's number three? Very top. Very top. Uh, not my yard. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Crab apples. We'll just start taking more time. Interestingly, this piece is actually the way it was cut. It, you take two hole cutters that fit inside each other with an eighth of an inch space and drill inside and outside, and that gets you a round tube, right? And then you drill down, and you get that when you split it in half. <laughs> Blank on this used to be the king beam in a house down at uh when they were building Truman Lake, the German uh and, you know uh wainscoted and then wood on top. And Everybody uh, want to guess what this one is? It's real easy. Pine? Yep. Old growth pine. The, no. This uh, this piece, I figure, because of the uh, tight lining, has got to be about a 250-year-old uh, pine tree. This is old growth. Be yellow. Uh, this is yellow pine, yeah. But unbelievable how tight the green used to be on these things. Anthony, all right. The green one is not wood. So, uh, that's what I know is that, right? That's uh, desert ironwood. And this is uh, lime. This is lime wood, yeah. <laughs> This is uh, balsam wood, and this comes from the styrofoam tree. <laughs> and this is the fun one. Uh, I can't do it. Here we go. Oh, put it right at the end, right by the bowl, right by the green bowl. Very, very fun. Oh, Ebony. Yeah, African blackwood. 
Uh -huh. And it's uh, it's real interesting to turn boxes out of it because you can get sapwood and hardwood. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea where I got that. What? Yeah. No, no, no I, I've had it forever. I don't know where it came from. Where did you get that styrofoam? Uh, it, I think it came packed in yeah. the shipping container. Then I just turned it. Wow. <laughs> you need for identification i've got the leaf yeah. <laughs> i have the buds now nah, don't smoke it and I have the bark. Any idea yet? And then I have the wood. Yeah. Let's turn that piece of plastic over. It says set. Right on. I'm looking at it. Right. <laughs> it says says sassafras. I always put the the, the wood and the date and how much it weighed this is first turned it hasn't dried yet so i haven't finished turning it but uh you can see the axis of the tree runs this way and it's got these um i don't know spider things come up starburst coming out of it and it's very yellow I don't know either. I just started cutting on the tree. It's in my backyard and not to be there for very long. And I know it's sad for us because uh, Mel Bryan told me so. I brought this because it's the um, we were supposed to guess what kind of wood it is, right? This is found wood. Oh. What? Oh. It is found on the ground. It grew up in my uh, daughter's front yard. Mushroom wood. It does look like mushroom wood, doesn't it? Not here. No. No. no, she had a 25 foot one here and it was beautiful and she decided to cut it down. This is willow, weeping oh. willow. I didn't smell it. Willow smell terrible. Hmm. Yeah, it's not well, I saw it for willow. I... <laughs> it was yours. Well, it's super, super. Yeah, I guess it must have been out. Well, Linda made this one from our daughter's husband's mom in Minneapolis, got this from the neighbor's yard. All we got was the bark. And then I turned this one out of the same log. If if that makes any difference to anybody. It's not sycamore. Buckthorn? That was my guess. But we're told it was hawthorn, but I'm I'm having some doubts about that. When I looked at that uh, wood database website, I, I came up with buckthorn. But we were... I mean, it was the neighbor told the neighbor who told the son who told us. And so, but we we were told it was Hawthorne. Yeah. And then, yeah, then I made that one. And then this one's from Prairie Village. And this one's from uh, South Carolina. Uh, 
this is Magnolia. But the South Carolina, I've seen these trees in Texas too. I turned the other half of this several years ago and had some big cracks in it that I just left in it. This one I attempted to fill. It's uh it's it's crepe myrtle. So that's our collection. Jerry, Jerry's picking a winner. Four, four, nine. Four, four, nine. Sue, you get your choice. Uh, you get your. I started with some more crafts that take quarter 20 threads. And uh, I put these in Illumilite, speaking of, and I brought in a fail. Um, and I kept having this happen over and over again until I called Illumilite and I talked to one of their engineer technician product dudes. And he told me never to use Illumilite with wood. Because I know, because it has to be the animal presence of Master Amy. And I put these burl, this burl, this could be a mystery wood too, because this is a Christmas tree burl, because a family member gave it to me under the Christmas tree and forgot what, what it was. They bought it on eBay. But I was like 50-50 on having the Illuminite frog up or, or foam over on me. And that was what the Illuminite engineer dude told me. And I was stunned. So I walked away for a little while after that. But all those are supposed to look like... Um, they used to tell, they used to sell used plaza lights, Christmas or Christmas bulbs that had burned out and they would turn them into ornaments. And my wife's a sentimental type. And, and so she has one. I, I turned a set of those in, in, di in different colors to look like the plaza lights, but any kind of Christmas light. And that's a Niles bottle stopper uh, blank in brass. So it look, looks like bulbish. Yes. I don't know. That's what I left a question on it. And I was really frustrated. Answer, but that was just my experience. The only thing I want to do is I see a quarter project somebody has paid me to do. Um, and that is a bear tapper. And it's not finished, so I don't have a finished product on it, but it's going to be good for my Father's Day, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to bring it in. And it's going to have, if I can get my fat fingers around it. Yeah. Discs that are the one that goes from me for her Father's Day present is going to paint the lettering for ale and lager and sour beer and what else he brews at home so that way he, he can just pop in whatever's on tap on the day of oh <laughs> right so i'm not going to of these things 
down here so I can sand it again. But, so that's the the bed capper. And it's just our bed caps screwing the corner 20 thread. So um uh, those projects that um its corner 20 thread, including bottle stock yeah. and now a beer cap. So there you go. So I've spent several months trying to figure out small little projects that I can do with those little bat blanks because it's free wood and it's nice and it takes color well. So uh, please come next month if you're interested and we'll talk about how to turn these. Um, I'll talk about, you know, some of the other things I did, like flocking the insides of some of them and um, trying to get a good friction fit on, on the lids um, and ways to decorate i'll have several examples and we'll get through the shape and the wood burning the lines into it and then i'll leave you guys to decorate what you how you want not very much of a secret other than Another epoxy example on the inside and the outside. Piece of maple, been, I mean, of walnut, been in a dry barn for about a year. So pretty low wood content. And basically, I uh, put it on my rotating thing. My goal is to be able to put the epoxy finish on it and do nothing to it after you're done. Because it just polishes out. So this has had nominal attention to the epoxy on it. And uh, now sometimes you'll find it irregular, so sand it 180, 250, 240, and then put second coat on it, and that'll usually come out really good. I'm sorry? There's only one kind I found that works, and it's a crystal clear tabletop, and it's a six hour curing. You put it on, rotate it for six hours, and by morning, it's hard but two weeks later it's really hard this uh is not anything special it's a piece of hackberry that i turned I think in the first year that I started turning things and it was, I found it in the bottom of the box of stuff and uh, it was, it just has a nice green pattern on it. And I decided to just go ahead and get a finish on it. Well, this is uh Coco Bolo. I turned it actually quite a while ago. Uh, I had to rebuff it today before I could bring it, but the things that's really good about it. It's inside. Bottom of Epstein's. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I always heard about people. Yeah, yeah. Just something different to use a uh, square piece of wood and recreate this. Um, this one can either be for a weed pot or uh, since it has a uh, test tube inside of it, it can be used for live flower. Big deal. All right, last things last. For those that stuck around, we get to see the end result here. 
Um, I do want to thank all of you all for coming tonight. I apologize for getting into more discussion probably than we needed to, but um, I think it was uh, necessary and I think you all needed to know. So I hope you leave a little more enlightened or a little bit uh, more understanding than how you showed up after the email. We should have had popcorn going in the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my mouth? Going? Oh, right in the bag, in the bag. That's how you take them out. We could have a thing, we could shoot them across the room, but take me first, right? This last one, you got to kind of push in the middle here to get it started. All right, that's it. Pass these around. Check them out. Cool. So let's give David one more hand. <laughs> so that's how you do it. Uh, try it out if it works for you. That's great. I hope it does. Uh, it's going to be your first time trying it out. Have fun with it. And if you have any questions, you have my phone number. Right. Thank you. Yeah, David's looking up to grab a blank so you can use. So uh, please take advantage of that. Um, so if you don't want to turn it, find somebody that does want to turn it. All right. Thank you all for showing up tonight. If we can get chairs back on the rack, that'd be super. Um, and I hope to see you all next month. <laughs> But I don't blame you if you don't show up because it's just me. 